Turn to you again. This morning, um, you will have to participate or you will miss kickoff. Okay? I need you to understand that. Um, I'm kind of a little bit perplexed in how to do this because uh, you ever uh, have something prepared and I mean quite honestly knowing in preparation that uh, about two and a half hours is what you really need but also knowing that I'm you're probably really only give me 35 to 40 minutes um, so I need your participation I need you to be able to move pretty uh, quickly with me this morning there's several 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 different parts that we're going to hit um, but honestly I, I, I strongly believe that uh, uh, this could help you really uh, be uh, eye-opening unto you if you allow it to be but first and foremost I need to know if you have something to write on you need a piece of paper this morning if you don't have one Mindy has some for you this is where you'll give those out that's actually where Jaylee was going to but she left me if you don't if you need a piece of paper just uh, uh, grab it from from Mindy there uh, you are going to need it um, if you watch this later online pause it right here and go find your piece of paper you're going to need that too Do me a favor on that. Um, write fairly small because you, uh, you you may wind up needing like the top half, bottom half, and then on the back too, depending upon how much you truly decide to participate. She get them all out or she have to go for more? She had to go for more? You guys not keep paper in your Bibles? Come on now, I need you to help me out and be doing that from now on. You never know when I'm going to call when you have to write something down. What about pen? You got something to write with? All right, good deal. You got them all, dear? Hurry up every chance you get. I ain't got all day to wait on you. Telling you what, Sunday school teacher ain't got no scrap paper, no paper, nothing to write on. On the top of your paper, now this is specific to you, and we're going to look at this, and there's a, a multitude of different ways that uh, as we travel through this that you can look, but uh, specifically speaking, uh, right now what you're looking at, I want you to write down three to five things, actually write down three to five things that you feel is important to you. Three to five things that you feel are your priorities, the things that you know or could identify that is important to you. Now, if I were to give you examples on that, uh, since we're in the church house, I'd be willing to bet that somewhere in that three to five list, somebody's going to say something similar to God, faith, church, something to that nature. Odds are, on down the list, it's going to say something like your family, your job, uh, maybe your, uh, uh, your, your reputation, your image, whatever it may be. Three to five things that you strongly feel is important to you. Again, this might be your priorities, if you will. Hopefully you can come up with three to five. Hopefully you've got three to five, because if not, we're going to, uh, to travel on. We're going to move here a little bit. Um, and may pause for a brief moment here, um, but we may not. This next portion, you can write down as many things as you would like to write, but I need you to choose an aspect in this, or you can even combine it multiple. It really doesn't matter. Um, things that are concerning to you, whether it be in your life, 
in your workplace, in your church, in your marriage, um, in your country. And odds are there are going to be several things that we could rattle through there real quick of things that concern us. There's a lot of things that's concerning to you and I uh, today, whether it's, uh, uh, you know, our, our, our health, uh, uh, things of, uh, um, you know, uh, our, our jobs, wages, um, how our wages never seem to increase, but the groceries keep going up. Uh, there's a lot of things that can be concerning to us. You know, you look at things in the church house, you know, that, uh, uh, you know, numbers ain't really uh, going through the roof, but they're not really falling down any either. We're, we're really holding steady, holding our own, uh, things that uh, we could do, uh, things that we can't do. Um, there's a lot of things that can be concerning uh, to you and I uh, within that, and just think on those um, for just a moment, again, I, I see a lot of you still writing, so thank you for participating. As you continue to write, I'm going to start talking, as if I've not really quit yet anyways. But I want to talk to you for a few minutes about influence. And as we talk about this, I could give you some different scriptures that we uh, may wind up turning to, um, things that you, you could look in, things that we've really already even mentioned in, in going over in Sunday school. But if you look at uh, things that uh, uh, we can influence, uh, people that have influenced you if, you, if you pause for just a minute and you thought of people in your life, people that had a huge impact and influence on you, uh, somebody that really made you change the way you think. Uh, we could all wind up finding somebody in there. Uh, we could put a, a, a face in our mind. Uh, you look at, uh, or you begin to think that, well, you know, do, do I really have much influence on other people? Is there anybody that I can really influence their, uh, their, their thinking, their ways, their approach? Um, whatever it may be, by the time we get through here today, I hope you realize that you have a huge area of influence, but if you'll allow me to, to sit down on a spot this morning and help you to think, uh, I know in Sunday school we talked a little bit, um, and it, maybe we didn't, maybe I was just kind of all up in the zone and it was going through my mind, uh, but we talked a little bit about Daniel and the influence that he had upon his government. Uh, did, did we talk about that in Sunday school? Okay, because I, I mean, like I said, I was kind of honed in up here for a little while. I wasn't really sure what I was going on. Um, but Daniel had a big impact and influence upon those that was around him, even to the non-believers. You can go even further back in time. You can look at Joseph. Uh, uh, Joseph had a huge area of impact and influence in the things that went on in his life, those that was around him. Uh, Joseph's uh, influence actually wound up uh, being the saving... Uh, 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 I hate to phrase it that way, but you know, kind of saving grace, if you will, to a uh, an entire uh, nation of people, even though that was by God's design, so on and so forth. Just allow me to say it that way this morning to uh, to help you see things and to realize. But there is that huge area of influence that everybody has. Everybody has an area of influence. Now, out of those things that you had written down. Let's go back to that for just a minute. Uh, uh, and, and we're going to pause in a minute here as I challenge you uh, because of the things that you wrote down, I, I really hope that you don't just fold it up and leave it in the church house because you're going to need this later this week if you go forth and uh, you actually participate all the way through. The things that you said that are important to you, I need you to ask somebody this week. I need you to find somebody, whether it's that you work with, that you know, somebody that you uh, uh, um, have a lot of communication with, and I need you to ask them, I say, hey, can you tell me three to five things that you think are really important to me? I need you to ask someone else what they feel your priorities are, because I need to know, and you, I don't need to know, you need to know, if what you strongly feel 
is what you are pushing out and what you are projecting because the things that you wrote down, I'd be willing to bet that of the people you asked, they won't give you the same answers because they didn't give me the same ones to me. Wasn't even close, wasn't even on the same spectrum of some of the things that was given back to me. There, church, is where we're going to be able to add a much larger growing list of concerns. If you think about the people that you uh, most frequently are around, would they be able to tell you the exact same things that are important to you? Anybody want to uh, uh, verbalize any of that? Pause and let you speak for a moment. Anybody feel that they would? Yeah, no, maybe? Okay. You do that on your own time this week. Hopefully you guys have a list that's something like a little bit at the top and then a little bit down below and hopefully you have about half your paper down at the bottom, do you? Maybe. If not, figure it out. This is what I need you to do now. Okay? I need you, you guys know how to draw like a, a, like a target, like a bullseye? I need you to draw a small-ish circle and then a bigger circle around it, and then a third circle that's a little bit bigger. So you'll have something that looks like a target. Something that would be like that. You with me? Let's talk about that for a few minutes. Pretty weird church service as far, isn't it? Been halfway through it, we didn't even read any of the scripture. I'm going to be honest with you, we may not dive too deep into it. Because today, it's about you. Today, it's about you. Those things that you wrote down that are most concerning to you, in that smallest circle in the center, start writing down the things in that circle that you have the direct control over. Of all the things that concern you in your life, in, your, uh, in whatever it may be, in your church, if you had a multitude of different things, if you wrote down in different categories, start putting down the things that you have control over. If you was talking about uh, uh, y y your marriage, things that are concerning you in your marriage, things that you have control over, one of them is going to be, <laughs> you, you have a whole heap of control over that, let me just be honest with you. Uh, whatever it may have been, things in your workplace, I can't control my workplace, mm, maybe, maybe not. Um, what the tax rate is, well you have no control over that, so that's not going to go in there. You begin thinking of things that you have direct control over. Start, start filling in that little circle. If you wrote down more than, if you're in an area of five to ten things that are concerning to you, odds are you won't have but two to three of them in that small circle. Most of the things that we spend our great amount of time dwelling upon, we have no control over. You want to get scriptural? All right, let's jump in there and let's do that. Jesus starts teaching and he's telling the people that uh, our stress and our worry is not going to change anything, any, any small little bit, any iota that we have, no matter how much much we worry it's not going to change our circumstances God teaches Jesus teaches you and I that if he cares enough about the grass to give it flowers to cover it to dress it to clothe it if he's feeding the birds and he's feeding the animals that of all the things that we have to worry about he's going to take care of us I need you to know that this morning uh, as we go on through this I need you to know that God loves you God has a purpose for you we're gonna find that out shortly but God has a purpose for you and he loves you and he desires you to be happy God desires you to be full of joy and you can't be full of joy if we spend all our time worrying about things that we have absolutely zero control over amen thank you The outer ring, or not the outer ring, but the next little, th this one, your second small spot right there. These are things that you can influence. These are things that just by your actions and your demeanor, your, uh, just the whatever charisma that you might have, um, 
things that uh, you may not directly be able to change, but you can affect. You know, just you walking into the room with a smiling face, if you want to talk about uh, a, 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 an unhappy work environment, well, you can influence that by not being of the same way. You can influence whatever it may be. It's not anything that you can exactly just uh, uh, flip the switch and change it, but you can influence. Start putting things in there that you can influence. Of all the things, uh, by this point, uh, going this uh, many minutes into this, uh, you, your mind is uh, uh, beginning to, to work a little bit faster. There's more things that you uh, can add. Start adding things in there that you can truly influence, things that you can affect. If you're unsure of what to do, then start thinking only upon Oakdale Baptist Church. Maybe your life is perfect and there ain't nothing going on. Well, start thinking of Oakdale and things that you can influence, that you can uh, 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 have an effect on. The farthest outer ring, anybody want to guess what's going to go there? The things that you have no control on. None. That it doesn't matter what you do, you can't affect, you can't change it, you, there is nothing. Now I need a bit of your feedback. Okay? I need you to participate, I need you feedback. In your smallest circle in the middle, things that you can control, how many things do you have in there? I have one, two, just one. Anybody else? One. What about in your influence ring? How many of you got anything in the influence ring? Is that like you got something or was that five? Five? Two? Two? Anybody else? Three? Your no control ring? Everybody's in control and can influence everything that bothers them. Four, two. You guys didn't write much stuff down, did you? I didn't give you. Did I not give you enough time? Do I need to? Do I need to sit down and drink me another bottle of water? Do we need, do you need more time in doing so? All right. So I did give you time to write it down, but how many of you thought of more things that would be here, there, or whatever? We're lo we're looking at uh, one to two is the only things that you can control. We're at three to five of things that you can influence and two to three of things that are of absolutely no control to you. Right? Make sure I'm hearing what you're saying. The same person that you're going to ask what's important to you, if you ask them, hey, can you tell me things that bother me? Would they tell you the same things? Would they be able to look at you and say, well, things that concern you would be, uh, this concerns you, that, it's the, the, would they be able to list these things out such as you? Hopefully, as you sit and write this stuff down, you're being truly honest with yourself this morning because I need you to be honest with yourself. You need to be honest with yourself. You don't need to be sitting here writing down the church house answers because you're sitting in church and uh, uh, you don't want anybody to peep over your shoulder and see that you're writing these things down. Well, friend, God's already knowing what you're writing down. God knows what you're afraid to write on your pencil because your neighbor might look. I need you to be honest this morning. I need you to know you because, friend, God does know you. God already knows these things about you, so he needs you to see this this morning. He needs you to be real with yourself. But at the same time, at some point this week, it's going to be that gut check moment for you that it's going to be, hey, am I living two different lives? Am I a pretend person on Sunday that has the idea that these things are what bothers me? Or am I being a true child of God? Am I being a Christian that is uh, exuding these things? things out to uh, to the people that they would know uh, the things that are important to me because if you ask uh, 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 um, how says if you asked uh, your girls at the beauty shop 
and you sit down and you say, Michelle, Barb, whomever, tell me the things that are most important to you. Can they write down what you wrote down? Well, bro, Bubba, that's tricky because they're my business partners and things that are important to me there is a little bit different than what's important to me at home. You know, because it's, a, it's important to say that, that, you know, my name's on this business and one thing that's important to me, I need them to be professional, I need them to be polite, courteous, I need them to be clean, I really don't want them to stink. Uh, I, I really need some things like that. Yeah, that's one thing, but do they know you? I mean, you have been in, in business together for quite some time. They've seen you uh, in your highs. They've seen you in lows. They've seen you enough to know what's important to you, right? So can they write down what you wrote down? You don't have to answer that. I'm just picking on you to give Mindy a break. I've been told I pick on her too much, so tag, you're it. If they can't write those things down... Can it be a manner that we have two different lives? Because in my particular situation, it was. It was in a manner that, well, there's, there, there's Tommy the preacher, and then there's Tommy the officer. And what might be important to this one may not really be important to that one, but the, 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 the thing about it is, is that we are God's children. We are heirs to the kingdom. We are uh, bought and purchased by the blood of the Lamb. We are God's children. Is there room in there for subcategories of each of us? Does God instruct you and I in any of the uh, uh, biblical teachings? Does he tell us to be this person or that person in certain manner or in certain people? But he simply says, just as we had in Sunday school this morning, to put on the, the armor of light that he desires you and I to go forth and to be his children, to evangelize the world, uh, to, uh, to lead the lost into him, to be the example. He, he tell, he's telling you and I uh, that, that we are, are, are known by our works, by our fruits. So we, were, we are known of one another by our love that we have for one another. So if the people that we have the most contact with, if they can't even begin to start writing any of these things down, church, we have a problem. We do. But it's not a problem in the outer ring. It's a problem that's in the in this, it kind of in, in the in between, it's things that we can influence. Way back in Deuteronomy, I'm going to read you something very familiar as we go through this. But way back here in Deuteronomy, in the sixth chapter, um, it's talking about said, "Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you." that ye might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it. That thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's son, all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it that it may be well with thee, and that you might increase mightily, as the Lord of thy fathers has promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thine soul, and with all thy might. Pause. If in your things that are in your priority list, things that are important to you, if... You wrote anything about your church, God, your faith, anything to that nature. Will anybody really know that you love God? Can somebody look at you and when you say, hey, what's my priorities? Can they look at you and they can say, well, I know one priority. I don't know a lot about you, but I can tell you one thing. You love the Lord. Can they say that? Because you look at all the... 
I didn't realize how much Sunday school was going to come into this, but you look at the, 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 the top things right there, they are specific to your relationship with, uh, with God. He's talking about having nothing before him, and that even here in Deuteronomy, that we love God with all our heart, all our mind, and all our soul. That's every fiber of your being, every ounce of yourself, that you love the Lord. And if that is one of the first things that is commanded for us to do, not only to teach uh, ourselves, but to teach our children and all those that are around us, when you ask somebody, hey, what are my priorities? If they can't say God is one of them, that is a problem. On your circle that you have, if they can't do that, you need to fill that in somewhere. This is back to our participation. You need to feel that if they can't say that you love the Lord, write that in there. That's one of our problems. Write it in there. But it's something that we can control and it's something that we can influence. You can write it twice. But let's read a little bit further. In verse 6 it said, And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. If we pause there, and if uh, you allow me to turn and read just a little bit over here in the, the 119th Psalm, I'm going to read just, uh, uh, probably read the first two stanzas in here. It said, Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts dil diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes, then shall I not be ashamed when I have res uh, respect unto all thy commandments. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. I will keep thy statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word with my whole heart have I sought thee, O oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. With thy, my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Come way back over here in Deuteronomy and it says, I command thee this day, uh, with that which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. When you talk about all the things being hid in our heart, how much of us love God enough that God's word can be hid in here? Do I expect you... Does God expect you to memorize Genesis all the way to the Revelation? No. I don't think that would be possible for not one of us here. But we should have enough love for God that on a service like this, you know, when a preacher ain't really preaching out of the Bible, when he's uh, uh, referencing a whole lot, you ought to have enough love for God that you, 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 your, your mind and your heart can already start going in places. When God uh, when it spiritually can be within you and begin welling things up inside of you, that there's enough love and reverence that is there that you can seek it out. Read down one more. It says, And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Pause. I bet somewhere on your list of priorities, your family or your kids or something that effect is on there. Now, if you want a true punch in the stomach, ask your kids, hey, can you uh, start telling me things that I've taught you biblically? Can you start telling me things that I have taught you about the Bible? Can you start telling me things that I have taught you about God? Not what church has taught you, not what Sunday school has taught you, but what I have taught you. Let me tell you, when you get punched in the stomach, you don't want to be all tensed up at one time. You got to be able to let, allow the, you know, when you get hit, to be able to blow that out, or it's going to hurt a lot worse. Let me tell you, when you get punched in the stomach, it hurts. I got punched really hard on that question. What have you taught your kids that is a true priority to you? 
They, they way up on the top of your list. If your kids are a priority to you with their eternity and with their salvation and with their relationship with Christ, would that not there too be a priority that you should have? And if you can't, if we, you ask them, if you're brave enough to look them in the eye and say, you tell me one thing that I have taught you about God. Okay, now tell me two things. If you can't get off one hand, can you say that's really a priority? One, two, three, four, five. How many of you think your kids could look you in the eye and tell you five things that you specifically taught them? But they're a priority. If they can't do that, put that in your list of concerns. Add that in your wheelhouse somewhere, and it's going to be in the ones that you can affect and you can influence. We influence that simply by the life that we live. Simply by the way that we behave in front of them. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. And thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. Pause. Your family is a priority to you, right? Amen? You have that, you ever have a conversation about God with your family? We're not talking about extended family. Hey, let's, let's keep this simple this morning. I don't know, let's not get hurt. Let's not get our feelings hurt too bad. Let's not talk about everybody that may be at family reunion. Let's just talk about people in our household. You have a conversation with him about it? Would, would the people that you live with, would they know that God is important to you? Would they know that uh, uh, Monday through Saturday or just on Sunday? Do we do those people know that God is a priority? If not, write it in your circle. Find the place that you would write it. And again, it's a place that you have control of and that you have influence on. Thou shalt talk with them when thou sittest in thy house and when thou walkest by the way. What about just, uh, again, the walkest by the way. When it's talking about thy way, there's going to be places that you would frequent. So when you talk about uh, things that would be in thy way, this is going to be your daily routine, people that you come in regular contact with, people that will be with, uh, in your inner circle. Can you say that you have talked about how good God is or any, anything with those people? I dare say that there, you don't have a concern. I would be willing to bet that with those people, you have more conversations with. Ain't that ironic? That there is a good chance that somebody that you're simply acquainted with or don't spend a heap of time with, that you are more comfortable talking about God with them than you are the very people that you live with. It's at the top of your priority list. That, too, could be a problem. That could be an area of concern. Put it in there. And when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. What's your bedtime routine? What's your morning routine? Well, you set up to whatever time. Most people... Most people of today's culture and today's society, before, just before they go to sleep, the one things that they do, they make sure they plug their phone up, put it on the charger, set their alarm, and they roll over and go to sleep. And they spent the previous probably 30 minutes to an hour and a half either numbing their brain on the TV, scrolling through the latest uh, news feed on whatever social media you have, you just lay there and you unwind and you just uh, indulge into whatever that may be. That's what we do at the Johnson house. I can't really speak what you do at your house, but that's what we do at our house. When we get up, let me tell you, you guys that have kids, you know this. You know exactly how long it takes you to get ready. Amen? For the four of us, 
well, not even the four of us, the six of us, the four kids is what I'm referencing, but the six of us, we know that in order to get here, by the time that I like to be at church on Sunday, we have to start getting ready no later than 20 after 8. And that will give us right at an hour for all six of us to get ready because I like to leave the house by 920. I prefer to be here before 930. We like to sit by ourselves for a few minutes, about 25 of them. But we like to get here. We like to be here. So we know exactly what we have to do. Now, in saying that, part of you are already thinking all six of you can get ready to leave the house in one hour. That, that's pretty good because we have a Jameson. I know. By the grace of God, we can do that. If you don't do that every day, I bet you have going to have to get up long before that. Am I right? But let's think on this. When thou liest down and when thou risest up, what are our priorities? What is important to us at that moment? The last thing you do before you go to sleep is you turn your phone or your TV off and you just roll over and you go to sleep. There was that, uh, I mean, we might, we might take time to say, Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for blessing me. Thank you for this. Thank you for that. Thank you for giving me a bed. When you wake up, you could say, Lord, thank you for allowing me to wake up again. Thank you for allowing my kids to wake up again. You know, this priority that we have, we could say those things, but odds are, the last thing we touched before we went to sleep is going to be the first thing that we grab back. Hey, you got to check the news of overnight. So, Lord, somebody might have posted something really important in the eight hours that we was asleep. Amen? Is that a priority to us? I would never put that as a priority. But you know, now that we think about it, if that's the last thing we're touching before we go to sleep, the first thing when we get up and several hours in between, that very well could be a priority to many of us. That could be a problem. We could put that in our box. Whether it's that or you open your eyes and you're immediately worried about work. Well, I got this to do, got that to do, these things are coming up, and we was worried about it before we went to sleep, and hey, that's why we didn't sleep none the night before, because we was focused upon these things. Well, what about this in verse number 8? And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and thou shalt be as frontless between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. When you really want to talk about our priorities and our love for God, if God was one of those and we can't do any of those things, we have far more problems than what we wrote down. Make a new circle. Same as your other one. Make a new one. Whew. It may be winter-like outside, but I'm telling you, it's straight-up summer in here. Got your circle made? Think for a minute. Who do you want to be? In Proverbs, you'll find that a good name is rather to be chosen than uh, uh, great riches. And in, in thinking in those manners, who do you want to be? Do you want to be known? by your priorities? Do you want to be known by um, if you was a business what would you want to sell? This may be if you I don't remember the guy's name who made this here little quote that's lasted like through forever, but the, said there's two uh, important days in your life. It's the day you was born and the day you figure out why. I don't remember what that guy's name was who said that, but uh, purposefully speaking, if you know your role within the body of Christ, your current role, that should be who you want to be. But if you figure out whatever product it is you're going to sell, whatever it is that you want to be, put that in the smallest circle on the inside of that one.
That's your what? That's your, uh, th that's your defining moment is in that. And all the things from your other circle that you can control will de help define your what that is right there. Everything that you wrote in there that you can control, if you can control it, you can control your product. You can control what you're going to sell. You can ultimately define what your result would be that is in there. In that second ring that was in there, it's the same. It's still your area of influence. This is your how. This is how you're going to do it. This is, a, if you was, again, if you was a business, this is your marketing plan. If you're wanting to convince, uh, if you're whatever, not convince, if you're wanting to sell whatever product may be this is this is how you're going to do it uh, if this is if whatever it is that your why is what whatever it is that's right there in the center of who you want to be you're going to influence all those that are around you to see that simply by the way that you live now anybody want to volunteer Good, Cameron, I'm glad you chose to. I'm not going to make you do much. This is what I need you to do. I need you to stand up. I picked you because you're in the back and the camera can't see you. I need you to walk around and I need to tell everybody, I need you to tell everybody what is so important to you without saying a word and without moving your hands. Can you do that? You'll try it? Everybody look at him. Let's go ahead and try it. Tell me everything that's important to you without saying a word and without moving your hands. I couldn't do a bit better than what you're doing right now. Can't do it, can you? How do we go about our life? You can sit down. How do we go about our life? Christians, how do we go about our life? Look back to Cameron. How do we go through Monday through Friday? How do we interact with people? How do we tell them what our priorities are? I guarantee you we do it just like that. We stand there with our hands in our pockets and our mouth closed and we don't say anything. We don't do anything. We just hope that when we walk somebody says, that guy's a Christian and there's the problem. And the people yelled, Amen. The people shouted hallelujah. How are we going to market who we are? We're going to open our mouth. We are going to go forth and we are going to do. If you want to influence people to know your priorities, if you want to influence people to change whatever it is that concerns you, you have to do it. Nowhere in the Bible does it tell you and I to sit and to stay and to do nothing. It always tells us to go forth, to stand up, to stand firm, to speak this, to speak that. It tells us to do. There is always a verb. But we choose this way. The outer circle, the things that you have no control of in your new wheel that you drew, that's your final result. If you was able to take these two circles and stack them on top of one another and superimpose them, if you will, they are going to line up perfectly. The difference is you will figure out that you do have a bit of control. You will figure out that by knowing who you are and how you want to influence as you go out can change every bit of the perception of whatever it may be. That the end result, uh, that you, your, your final product, everybody will know what it is. When you begin doing these things, all the people that you ask and you say, hey, hey, what are my priorities? Can you tell me? You start listening about You tell me what is most important to me. They can probably number them. They may be off just a little bit, but I bet you they'll get the same things in the same list.
Anybody want to be brave and tell me what people know you as? If you wanted to be daring, five and a half hours to kick off, guys. Don't look at me like that. you got plenty of time. If we wanted to be daring, what if I put everybody's name in a hat and we passed it around and you drew one out? And I said, next Sunday, whatever name you get, you're going to write down what that person's known by, what they're known as. You're going to write down what you feel their priorities may be. Would you want to do that? Would that be something that would scare you to death to unfold that piece of paper? When you look, take somebody knowing that somebody handed it to you, and this is everything that you put out, and this is what uh, uh, people see you as. If you want to see that clear transparency of who you are, would you want to do that? If you do, find somebody in the church house, somebody that don't live with you, and you tell them, hey, will you do me a favor this week? Will you just jot down some things that you feel that I'm known as? That's on you. I won't make everybody do it, but if you want to do it, friend, do it. This week, we uh getting ready to put all the yearbook together at the middle school, and we done like, uh, you know, like the senior superlative things. You guys ever do those or have those in your annual, uh, uh, most likely for this, most likely for that, whatever it may be. We had some fun with them in the, uh, uh, from the teacher's uh, standpoint and kind of voted on. Uh, um, it's funny what you people's known as, you know, uh, um, most likely to be found without their keys or radio. Two things that you should have on you at all times. Well, you know, that's you don't really want to be found as that one. Uh, first in line at the potluck. Guess who got that one? Anybody want to guess? It was me. I got voted for that one. Uh, but things like that, you talk about things uh, 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 most likely to tell you a cheesy joke. I got voted for that one too. You think about it, and it, 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 it is, it's humorous. It's something you can giggle at, but you start thinking about what, what you are known as, what people think of you, how it is that they see you, how they recognize you. How many of you are going to be able to, how many people are going to say, read this right here to you from the book of uh, uh, Galatians in the fifth chapter? And I'll be done right after this. It says, but the, this is talking about the fruit of the Spirit, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness temperance against such there is no law when people start identifying you can they use any of those traits those are the things that we should be producing our outer ring should be filled with those words should be filled with that's our end result that's what we're selling that's what everybody's going to see us as Fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit, church. Let us do that. 